because there you don't have to go to extremes to get good health. And you don't have to go to these extremes of trying to cut the fat out to reverse heart disease or reverse diabetes. I'm trying to give people some logical sensibility and show the amount of scientific support there is behind that. So I appreciate that. So how do you measure success in the patients following the Eat for Life program beyond weight loss and biomarker improvements? Eat for Life is the name of my most recent book, even though I have like 12 or 13 books. So mm -hmm. I call it a nutritarian diet. It's just a term, you know, I don't want to, you know, just a term to mean super healthy diet. I don't think whole food plant-based represents a diet style of enough, enough um, selection of the, right, of the proper foods you should be eating. So a nutritarian diet is just the attempt to eat the right type of foods. And like I said, there's so much evidence and some of which I prevented here. And that, that means that you have enhanced lifespan. But because my patient population, not just of my patients, but because of my television shows on PBS and because of the best sell, and I have seven New York Times best-selling books, I have many, many thousands of people around the, around the United States and the world who followed my recommendations and have reversed diseases, even people I've never seen or never met, and, and, reach, and achieve these radical results and enhancement in lifespan. Of course, the longer we live, the longer we can see people that are older living longer. And now that I'm getting somewhat older, I'm seeing my patients that came to me when I was younger and they were older, I'm seeing them live, even people that came to me in their 70s are now still alive who had heart disease back then that reversed it. And even people came to me, so I'm seeing a lot of the, my patient cohort living in their 90s doing and still in good health. So I think that my clinical experience is corroborated by the evidence we have from not just the blue zones, but on these longevity studies and these long-term studies showing that, which I presented in numerous studies today on showing that more unrefined foods that are plant protein heavy, like beans and nuts, need to long, lead to longer lifespan, particularly in the context of green vegetables. And by the way, the studies on G-bombs are overwhelmingly positive. What I'm saying is that onions, without changing a person's diet, just eating onions has a protection of 50 to 88% reduction of common cancers, just the regular consumption of onions. And we look at Mushrooms, mushrooms. So each one of these foods individually has been shown to extend lifespan and prevent cancer. But you put together a dietary portfolio that includes all these beneficial foods, then we have this potential power to really push the envelope of human longevity. So we have this unprecedented opportunity to take this overwhelming amount of science and put it together and design what we could eat, you know, a kitchen, a dietary portfolio to include these things, make them taste good and really extend human lifespan dramatically. How has the, uh, the uh, understanding of the microbiome, which has become very popular in the last 10 or so years in, in uh, public consciousness, how, how has that changed our understanding of nutrition and how does that um, and does it impact the, the, uh, the dietary guidelines that you suggest to people? Absolutely, because we know people on unhealthy diets have a high, and especially people who are overweight, develop a high ratio of firmicutes to bacteroides in their gut. They have more unfavorable guts. And those unfavorable guts lead to more inflammation and more leaky guts. And we know that when we eat a wide variety of plant material, a wide variety of fibers, we get healthier guts and more production of short-chain fatty acids, particularly butyrate which has an anti-inflammatory effect, which now activates the GTP1 receptors or hormones, and then also activates the, the, the apostat, because butyrate has a negative feedback look on apostat in the brain. So we control our appetite better when we eat healthfully. We, we're more satisfied with fewer calories when we eat healthier. And what I'm saying here, here's what it tells you to do, a wide variety of nutrients, and the high degree of resistance starch and fiber in beans, and those G-bombs, which build the healthy bacteria in the gut, we're talking about greens, the raw foods, salads, of course, with onions, leafy greens with onions, and also mushrooms and beans have incredible power to build a biofilm that, that slows the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream, which means that the healthy microbiome and creating a healthy biofilm from eating these foods regularly lowers the glycemic load when you eat carbohydrate-containing vegetables because it makes the carbohydrates absorb more slowly. And the hallmark of a healthy centenarian is they have low production of insulin. They don't need much insulin because they're insulin sensitive. They're not insulin resistant. 
And I'm saying that when you eat all these healthy carbo, these healthy fibers, a wide variety of these healthy fibers, it makes your the calories enter the bloodstream more slowly, requiring less insulin. So there's lots of reasons why we strive for a healthy microbiome and eat a wide variety of these plant fibers we're recommending people eat, right? And if we score carbohydrates on a hierarchical scale of quality, then, you know, then, then of course, beans have the most fiber and most resistant starch and most slowly digestible fiber carbohydrates. So beans become an excellent food because they're high in protein, they're low glycemic, they're high in resistant starch, and they're high in fiber, and they are absorbed so slowly in the bloodstream. So beans are the nut equivalent to carb nuts equivalent. To nuts are absorbed very slowly, and beans are absorbed very slowly. So we don't get the spike of calories in the blood, and all that, and, and that's intimately related with the microbiome. So with cholesterol, there's a thought that cholesterol tends to increase as we age. And uh, we had a speaker talk about how in healthy populations that are more plant-based, it actually reduces with age. What, what does the research you've seen show? Should we expect our cholesterol to just increase as we age? You know, um, I, I'm, I'm suggesting that your body weight and maintaining a low body fat percent and being more interested in keeping more fit with a muscle to bone to body fat ratio as we age is the critical factor that affects our risk of cardiovascular death and also in analyzing our diet. So looking at the diet you're eating and your fitness and body fat levels are more important than looking at your cholesterol level, going, seeing if it goes up or down. So the answer to your question is, for some people it stays stable and other people it may go up a little bit, but it's not the concern because people are overly concerned about the value of their cholesterol level and not about the value of their body fat level and they're maintaining their, and, and eating right. It's really being lean and eating right that determines your cardiovascular death, not whether your cholesterol goes up or down a little bit. Thank you. So what are your thoughts on various conventional treatments such as like, uh, as like for cancer, we've had some people talking about cancer and, and chemo, and a lot of the speakers say, oh, this is, you know, like a whole food plant-based diet or a healthy lifestyle, you know, will help support these conventional treatments, what, what are your thoughts? If somebody is diagnosed with cancer, um, should they look to augment the conventional treatments with a whole food plant-based diet? Should they not do these conventional treatments? What, what are your thoughts? Well, I do have my own protocols for people with cancer. And on my website, on my events page, I have a conquer disease masterclass for people with cancer tell me what my recommendations are. I just have that added information of five videos that go into that more depth for people with that issue. And that what I talk about here is that um, when your type of cancer you have is very aggressive, like uh, blastocytic leukemia or a premenopausal pre aggressive breast cancer, then chemo is necessary because the cancer is too likely to be life-threatening. And that when the cancer is very aggressive and growing very fast, the cells are replicating rapidly, which unravels the DNA and makes it susceptible to chemotherapy. The more dangerous cancers that are gonna kill you are gonna be where chemotherapy is more effective at knocking out the cancer. The more slowly growing cancers like prostate cancer or garden variety postmenopausal breast cancer, which is estrogen positive, those cancers are growing more slowly and the slow growing cancers are not susceptible. You don't extend lifespan significantly with chemotherapy because the cancer cells are not going to be so susceptible to the chemo. Now, even in the more aggressive cancers where chemo is recommended, then you still always have like one in a million cells that's going to escape the being killed by the chemo. And those one in 10,000 or one in a million cells that escape chemo to begin with could proliferate and start a new cancer coming back three years, five years, or eight years later and can then be the ultimate cause of this person's death because now when the cancer grows back the second time, it's, it's based on cells replicating that were resistant to chemotherapy to begin with, and then more likely it's gonna be hard to kill those cells with chemo the second time. So that's where, whether you use chemo or you don't use chemo, if you needed to use chemo, then the stray cells that escape chemo are susceptible to the heightened immune system from a person eating a very high quality diet with supplemental mushroom extracts and green tea and, and astragalus and beta-glucan and 
curcumin and black turmeric and turmeric, all these things that help the body's recognition, the, the, even the, ma the different types of mushroom extracts can help the body's recognition of abnormal cells so the immune system can go in and destroy them. But that big mass of cancer cells that coalesced in the beginning would not have, the, the immune system would not have been able to dig into that tumor and remove that cell completely. You needed the help of the chemotherapy or surgery or radiation for that matter for that coalesced big mass. But then utilizing it with the dietary approach, 